Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Babel here, John by Lark. You're watching a third game of a BO5 series between MR and S2I. This is the Haunt to a Southeast Asia Grand Finals between both of them. And uh, that's going to be 10 men fight here. And how are you doing, Lark? Are you still in tune? Morning? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. Don't worry, bro. Uh, I'm playing too much Flappy Bird. What, what is Flappy Bird? Come on. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. What is Flappy Bird? Forget it. You you you're just not you just caveman lark. Anyway, <laughs> we have a game here and that's uh between S2 MR so far. The action's been great. Uh one side picking up one game each. Uh, of course S2 winning the first game very nicely. MR second game we saw the big play by the Tempest and a bit of misplay by S2. -Y. But I hope that, you know, everything's kinda cooled down over here. You know, this is um gonna be the important match in the BO5 series. The third game is always the most important because I, I can understand if we throw the first and second game. Um, but the third game is where, you know, this is where shit gets serious, so yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, they don't want to mess up their opportunities of winning the entire thing. Uh, currently, they're one apiece, so I'm pretty sure they're all going into this thinking like, okay, if we can net this next game, we're probably going to win the next one after that. And it could very much happen, but also at the same time, we got to remember this is a mess out of five series. It could even go... Uh, three games into, I mean, five games in, so it'll be like a 3 2 victory. Uh, so hopefully, these games have steeled the resolve, kind of calmed themselves down after that first two games. They're very, very close, actually. I actually thought that S2Y was going to be able to come up on top of that because they had the, uh, you know, they had the Kronos pickup, but uh, unfortunately for them, uh, Bushwick too strong, plus the roaming potential from the uh, Pebbles and the Nymphora, which they didn't address, so that was kind of the other. Uh, downfalls there coming from Estua, but MR man is just looking strong. Like the first game, they just didn't. I think the first game was just kind of like a warm up for them, to be very honest. I think maybe now they're feeling more or less like in the zone and like, yeah, let's do this. And yeah. Yeah, of course. Let's do this. Indeed. That's it. The banned heroes, um, we haven't covered that yet. We have Sandra, Bubbles, War Beast, Rush Attack, all of which are very good heroes being banned away. It's a bit weird to see that Estua is not going to have to play, uh, not going to have the opportunity to play Sandra. And banning this. At this moment in time, means a lot to MR. MR is also going to ban on Warbase, that's pretty fantastic. And as to why, I don't know why they're banning on Bubbles, but uh, Rush Attack's definitely a good ban. Bubbles is a great ban, don't get me wrong, but seeing how MR played, uh, sorry, that was s 2 first game, but I know, but uh, I mean, s 2 y and MR, Bubbles is just not one of those heroes that they did, that they would do very well with. Um, Turtle Masters, that's a different level. So I don't see why they're banning this hero against MR. Yeah, I think uh, they're just a little bit afraid of. 017 maybe playing a really good uh, bubble, uh, or maybe they're just banning it because <laughs> this game did a pretty bad job and Tempest. just wants to ban it just to make sure not to give it to him. Uh, this time around, they're gonna get Pestilence and Tempest, so at least they deny the Pestilence Bushwreck combination, very very strong. Uh, Legion side, at least they have the uh, early game from Pebbles, late game with the Bushwreck. Uh, what their support can be is probably maybe the uh, Master of Arms, that'd be pretty good uh, synergy there with the pe uh, with the Pebbles there. The Offensive Master's Call can allow him to be able to, you know, dish out his combo that much more quicker and be able to, you know, get a little more couple of auto attacks in between those uh, spellcast times. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, Master of Arms is a pretty good pickup here, unless they decide to go with something like a Parasite. Just the hard count of Tempest, or maybe even the Keeper of the Forest. Uh, since they do have first pick anyway out of the second picking stage, they can always hold off the MOA this time around, but uh, that just gives uh, S2A the option to pick it up themselves if they want to. Yep, that's it. We got the Tempest again being picked into this game, but this time around S2Y is going to play it. That's very interesting. Bushwhack is going to MR. It seems like they're always snatching between Bushwhack, Pestilence, Tempest, and Pebbles. Of which, um, yeah, I, I get the synergy there, but this is getting a bit ridiculous. I mean, the, it's always the same heroes in his view game, and it's gonna boil down to who gets better farming. It's a very close game, but oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. CD, Keeper of the Forest, something a little bit different. Corrupted Disciple, man, it's been so long since we saw that hero in competitive play. Yeah, it, it's been a really long time, man. Corrupted Disciple will address the Bushwhack capabilities there, to a certain extent. I say that because Jungle Toxin still does not... Uh, change. It's always going to apply 79 physical damage per second. So that's still going to be a very, very strong uh, 
uh, strong thing going in the way for Bushwhack against this, uh, carp this disciple carry coming up from uh, Hellburn's side. They're thinking of going for a torture or maybe even banging out the torture. I believe torture here would be a good pick for Hellborn if they're deciding to go with that push because it will work very, very well with the Tempest. And it's a very good lane setup with the Pestilence as well. Oh yeah. That's it, we got the uh, heroes that have been thrown in the second banding pool very nicely coming out in pool here. We got the MOA, the Engineer, Grenax, Rally, Midas and Pharaoh. Now, the thing is, a um, bit of a quick analysis here, we can see a lot of roaming ganking potential heroes that have been addressed quickly, and Midas is one hell of a good AoE stunner at level 4, so that's a very strong hero. I'm kind of amazed that it's not being picked until this point in time. And Pharaoh also a very good hero, of course Pharaoh is one of the main, stronger um, initiation hero. His Aldi is one of the best, Pharaoh's Wrath, it's great, it reaches far and beyond, it can reach Lux House from my place. So, what? Yeah, that's a 20 kilometer reach there. Faster than the... Just star, but can't believe uh, I did that. Anyway, we got Infora here. Uh, yeah, okay. up. Again, Infora Pebbles combo worked up well for MR in previous game. I'm hoping they work well again in this one. Uh, it could, it could very much work well since they have the Keeper of Forest this time around. So there's a lot of push potential there, and Infora Heal Pot is good for a uh, Keeper of the Forest. You know, every time they push the towers, they can easily keep healing up the creeps. Bub uh, bubble, sorry, uh, Pebbles is able to uh, do a lot of trip damage with the Chuck ability there. Bushwhack just farms in another lane while the rest Rhapsody. of the teammates, uh, you know, go ahead and push the other lane. But Rhapsody, Rhapsody, my friend, is one of the best pickups here for Helburn team. It's gonna be a lot. It's gonna offer a lot of synergy towards the push potential coming from Tempest and the ability to have the protective melody game turner in team fights. Should a uh, huge team fight ball down and Rhapsody is in a good position, huge protective melody, the rest of his teammates survive. You know, it, it's always the make or break situation. Like one second. Before his death and the protective melody comes out and you're still fighting and he's still alive, whatever you do is nothing. Nothing is gonna stop him. Uh, but yeah, uh, Leech team's actually gonna round up their lineup with a Plague Rider. So Plague Rider is gonna be a good counter there to Tempest. That's uh, they've got two good counters actually, Keeper of the Force and the Plague Rider there. Plague Rider is gonna offer a lot of uh, DPS, magical DPS and burst potential there when. Paired with the Keeper of the Forest, so that's also something else that could work in their favor there. Yeah, that's it. We have um, the Bushwhack Plague Rider being picked here, so that's pretty good AoE combo coming up for Team Legion side. Of course, want to see the Pebbles Nymphora combo a lot more in this game, and uh, I will not like this Lodestone pick here because it's not going to really do much in terms of AoE as well. Um, seeing the Wretched Hex bend out, I want to see something like maybe a Magmas coming in here with Tampas, a very good combo. And DM's pretty okay. I mean, Soul Stealer is definitely a lot better here, but uh, seeing how Thai teams generally just play Soul Stealer. But don't know what they're gonna pick, but hopefully it's gonna be AoE related. If not, there's not gonna be enough damage from Tempest uh, Element of Void to pick up that synergy there. Of course, Rhapsody Tempest synergy is present, but you need someone with very good AoE support coming in here. Yeah, I think uh, if they pick up the Drunken Master there. Hmm, let's see. Drunken Master actually is not such a bad choice because it's kind of hard to kill him off with a lot of the heroes from the team. Uh, they're actually going to go with Kraken, so double suction. I guess that's also fine. Uh, why, I said, why I said um, Drunken Master is actually a pretty good choice because his ultimate just works so well against all the heroes from Legion side. Like Pebbles is forced to use a check on himself. Bushwhack can't really throw the dart at him. Plague can't use Contagion Nuke on him. Uh, yeah, so a lot of the nukes gets practically disassembled there in front of the eyes of the drunken master. Uh, but yeah, they're actually gonna go with, with Kraken here, so Kraken actually gonna be the offlane Kraken. Now this is something we see a lot in the international scene, not so much oh, yeah. here in the Southeast Asian scene, so I'm surprised that it's gonna be played in offlane as it's on escape, if I'm not mistaken, so yeah. Yeah, once and for all gonna address this, escape is not escape, he's ESC. He did scold me when I was in Thailand, but... Oh really? Wow. Yeah, it's the, even the... the on GMs came to me and say, Babel, that's not escape. <laughs> Stop calling him that, he's gonna hunt you down. I'm like, okay. Wow, wow, wow okay. <laughs> Alright, sorry, bro. But, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, game number three in the BO5 series, it's S2R versus MR. MR now gonna be the Legion site, and we have Nymphora, gonna be played by Color X. Bomber Chapal onto the Keeper of the Forest. We got also Shooter 1X onto the Meat Lane Pebbles, most probably. O7 TV1 onto the Plague Rider, that should be in the off lane. Last but not least, do I kill you? Also known as Duikyu is going to be onto the 
interesting bushwhack that's not so interesting after seeing them back to back for about two weeks. So yeah. That's it, help on team, it's gonna be as to why. Made in Thailand, sorry sorry, it's gonna be there and we got PD Yets onto the Tempest. Kraken being played by ESC. This car is gonna play onto the Disco Light Rhapsody. We also got Baxley Gashi onto the Corrupted Disciple Lost Manalis. Mr. Sans is gonna be the mid lane Pestilence. So pretty good draft here from both sides of course. Um, I kinda don't like the Kraken pick at the very end of that draft from s y Although it's a very good pick, I know, but there is a lack of AoE damage there. You can argue that Realista Kraken deals substantial damage. I will tell you again that it doesn't really do a lot. It's a more kind of like a crowd control skill than a damaging skill. Yeah, for sure. Um, judging by the way the, the lanes are going to be set up, I just believe the uh, Keeper of the Forest Jungle. Really nothing else to be said about that. Do I kill your short lane? Play right at the top, uh, Pebbles and for mid. Uh, for Hellburn side, we're just going to see Kraken going to the off lane there in that Rhapsody and Pestons in the middle lane, Tempest Jungle, Corrupted Disciple over there in the short lane. Uh, definitely look towards both the Tempest and the Keeper of the Forest making rotations to quickly address the tier 1 towers on both ends of the map. Uh, the bottom and the top that is for either side of the team. So yeah, I think that's practically how it's going to go down. We might even see some early... I mean, just judging by the wards... Uh, Coming out from Nymphor, I don't really think they're going to go for full-on heavy warding against the Tempest there in his, own, uh, in his own jungle, that is. But yeah. Yeah. So, everything is looking pretty good so far. Because the game hasn't started, so no goal lead. This is the perfect moment in the game where it's kind of split down the middle exactly 50-50. But yeah. Um, I, I'm thinking that... I did see a lot of good synergy from both Color X as well as Shit One X, both the X's there from Team Legion with the Pebbles and Infora combo. Want to see a lot more of that just so that the ganks can go in their favor. Whereas for Hellbound Team, you don't see that much of a roaming action happening in terms of the hero draft already. You see pretty good synergy in terms of big AoE team fights, but in terms of ganking potential, they're just kind of lacking a little bit. And if you really count, the amount of stunners there is only, I think, about two or three um, reliable ones. Kraken, I would not count his stun as reliable because. It's just charging to a three, uh, tree you could probably fill half the time. So, yeah, that's a 50% wall card there for you. 50% wall card, yeah. Um, yeah, so they actually warded up uh, the pull camps there for uh, this corrupted disciple at the top side. So it's not going to be able to work with that anytime soon. Uh, as well as the medium camp for uh, Tempest. So, at least uh, at the same time, that will provide some sort of blockage against the Tempest, but Tempest has still a lot of other camps to work with, so it's not really going to slow down his farm as much, plus, I mean, Tempest is just one of those, uh, you know, those jungle heroes that can farm really, really, really fast, uh, if played properly in terms of, like, you know, pulling the creep wave out, and then, you know, just farming it out, making sure not to kill it inside the camp. I'm pretty sure that PDGets has a good idea of how to do that. Uh, Kraken here at the bottom lane against the Bushwhack is probably going to have a... Uh, pr it really depends on the first couple of uh, waves. If Kraken is able to get the one up on him, I think Kraken will still be able to uh, get a decent um, showing here. Uh, of course, he's going to get heavily harassed by Bushwhack with the crippling dart. Uh, but if Kraken gets his bottle, uh, he can just you know sit back, relax for a bit, just use the splash ability whenever he needs to. And for middle lane, Pestilence and Rhapsody uh, doesn't have as much burst potential as compared to the Pebbles and the Mephora there. So in that regard, definitely give favor to Bubbles and Far Lane, but really, again, it really depends on the first few waves of uh, Creepster and whoever gets the model first. But yeah, yeah. top lane, Big Rider already dishing quite a bit of harass to corrupt the disciple. Yeah, exactly. That's it. About one minute into this game, mid lane, you can see already it's the Nymphora Pebble combo that I spoke of so much, and we got Pestilence up against here with the Rhapsody. That's pretty good stuff. The bottom lane, Bushwhack is gonna. Definitely hands down win this thing. Kraken's not gonna be able to do jack against Bushwhack scribbling dot. That's gonna be a hell of a harassment there. That said, we also have the top lane flick rider that's just uh, doing a lot of crypt deny there. Very nice control also. The crop the disciple is just um, a little bit frustrated, you can tell. Um, flick rider is just waiting for a little bit more uh, cooldown to be off his contagion. Contagion's gonna be so strong. But yeah, he is definitely gonna be in a bit of a good spot if this is a one versus one lane. Um, denying creeps and getting extra experience, but it's gonna be up to the farm. So speaking about farm, let's just look at a CS of this top lane. Here we got Flick right about 1-4 in, and uh, Corrupted Disciple at about 5-1. So Corrupted Disciple getting the extra farm there, but Flick Rider is not is denying more creeps than Corrupted Disciple. So that's it. Flick Rider's level should actually be kind of a little bit higher 
bankrupt the disciples so far. Yeah, um, let's see here. Um, middle lane seems like, uh, Infor is just trying to check out whatever the rune was. Top lane, it's going to be the double damage though, unfortunately for, uh, Nymphora. Grab City is going to get that. I'm going to offer him some abilities that just pump in a little bit of auto attacks there against them. Probably not so much since the lane is kind of in an awkward position. Uh, top lane Plague Rider, just again throwing out the Contagion Nuke onto Corrupted Disciple and... I mean, he doesn't need to worry too much about his mana, I mean, he has Extinguish, so it's such a very good option here. The nice EXP from Corrupted Disciple, but Corrupted Disciple actually using the um, Electric Tide there to get a little bit of uh, damage in onto uh, Plague Rider. But yeah, bottom lane, man, Kraken and Bushwhack, Bushwhack definitely getting the upper hand right now. Uh, it's just, he's, wow, he's manning up really, really hard against uh, Kraken, and Kraken actually just splashes him right there. Uh, level 4, he actually opts to go for uh, the Torrent there, and 2 points in the splash, so yeah, that's kind of fine. Yeah, that's kind of fine here. 3 minutes in already, and we're looking at Kraken um, getting some farm down south here, and Bushwhack's doing a pretty good job so far. But in the jungle, we have Keeper, as well as Tempest, both of which seems to have a bit of an uninter uninterrupted farm, except for the pool cam ward here that's being conducted by... Team Legion, so that's gonna block out a little bit of a camp farming spot there for Tempest. But generally, Tempest against Keeper, you would definitely favor Tempest in terms of farming because he has got Elemental Replicate that's just generally gonna help him farm a lot faster than the three dogs coming from Keeper. Yep, and I mean, see, let's take a quick look at Tempest. 282 gold per minute, uh, three minutes, and not a bad. Oh, actually, there's no items. Where's the career? Um, okay, I guess his item's probably in base. He's 1k gold saved up right now. He's actually rotating towards the middle lane, probably wanting to set up a, a gank on Pebbles, but I don't really think that they can actually get much done here. Maybe just gonna yeah, go ahead and check the rune. He's gonna get a nice refreshment for himself, so that's kind of fine, or he's gonna even just avoid that and pass it on to Rhapsody, because either way, he's written for his bottom lane and he picked up the illusion rune. Yeah, pretty good stuff there. So about 4 minutes still, and other than some rune action, this is actually going to be a very serious gaming, like Mishi has said into a Twitch chat, Han is serious business here in Thailand, and <laughs> we are looking at them just playing so, so conservatively, so much protective play in, in place here. But here comes the far from behind, Kraken probably going to be a bit of trouble there, but a nice sidestep away from the stun there, and it seems like Bushra gets turned on here, nice body block and Infora Colorex is going to try and block out Bushra, but do I kill you, is in a bit of a trouble here. Kraken is confused, Kraken is lost in the woods, my god, like a little Raid Riding Hood. Yep, really well played there by um, Nymphora to pass the bottle to Bushwhack, he was able to get a little bit of HP back up and he's level 6 now, he's gonna get, he, there, okay, now he, like, it's just completely out of hand right now at the bottom lane. If Kraken is to, to come back here again at the bottom lane, he's gonna die. Uh, pretty fast against the Bushwhack, so uh, that one level advantage is so huge seeing as to how Bushwhack has that uh, level 6 ultimate there. The jungle toxin is very very good in terms of just harassing, especially uh, melee units there, so... Good rotation by Nymphora, Keeper of the Forest getting actually pretty low. Uh, let's take a look at the career, is there any items there? Okay, there's no items. I think uh, he's gonna be very close to picking up his ring of sources. Oh yep, the leg mines could connect the mid lane. Nymphora comes back to join Pebbles here. Very good stuff happening. Meanwhile, Kraken again takes a bit of beating from the Bushra. Bushra already had the extra advantage that he needed so far in the early game because of the Nymphora gank there. Kind of like it that uh, he's gonna have extra space so far. Level 6 already, Kraken falls to pop the health potion. And Bushra already with the Ghost Marches up, so that's pretty good um, farming action from MRR. You're gonna see how Estewise is gonna address this Bushra, but they are kind of disinterested. Oh! In the so far. Wow. Pretty good stuff happening top lane. Contagion, right? And uh, the. Yep. He carrier. used the Contagion play here. He was really lucky that the last creep there, the Warlock, uh, was it Warlock? Yeah, the Warlock, I think, uh, was very, very close by and was able to bounce back one more time. And holy shit, bottom lane. Bushwhack doing so much damage to Kraken, but taking a lot of harass himself because of the tower there. Uh, yeah, so do I kill you this time around? I'm gonna be following the same kind of play style. Gonna finish up the Ring of Teacher and then into a Nullstone, I believe, and a Dawnbringer. So that's probably his. The item build he's gonna go for, and look at middle lane. Not sure what that toss was all about, but yep, three heroes here, and I believe they want to set, set up some pressure. But Keeper of Forest actually is gonna go back and rotate, rotate again into his uh, own jungle there. Yep, and we're looking at mid lane, just Pebbles getting really angry and chucking things all about a the place there, like an angry kid. But we got a flick rider 
Just a level 7, top lane, doing pretty good here against uh, Corrupted Disciple. So Corrupted Disciple now is going to be joined by Tempest. Tempest again doing a standard routine level 6 push at the top lane. It's generally okay until it reaches the point where you need to get a little bit extra support here. But of course, Flickerton needs to call for help, and help is definitely not going to be coming in in form of a TP because it requires only level 4. So that's the sandwich there. Yeah, only level so 4 and. He... it's not gonna be a while before he reaches that level 6. The tier 1 tower at the top, by the way, is really taking so much damage because uh, Tempest has been constantly harassing that. And now you finally see a little bit of rotation now by Keeper of the Forest to put pressure of his own at the tier 1 in the bottom, which he should have been doing for quite a while. Uh, because I think that if, uh, if Hellborn really wanted to, they could actually just go ahead and port back bottom. But looking at the infantry for Curved Disciple doesn't have a homecoming stone. Tempest does have one middle lane though. Middle lane, yep. That's a very risky jump the there from the Pestilent. It's not going to be in time for much of anything at all. And wow, he's actually going to take damage all the way down to just about 100 health there. And here comes also the backup from the top lane. CD is going to just swing by and say hi. Um, not the kind of greeting you want to see coming from the Legion team. But uh, they are just going to have to be prepared for that kind of gang. That's it. Bottom lane's down as well. They did trade both tier 1 and the short lane perspective for both sides. So I kind of like this uh, fair trade. Mix the team, mix the game a lot more balanced in that sense. Yep, fair fair trade there. Um, Plague Rider unfortunately for Crypto Disciple is level 7 already and he's close to finishing his... Uh, well maybe not as close but he's getting there uh, to finishing his Astrolabe middle lane. Still again really nothing much from these two guys just I mean these two well these four guys actually uh, they're just you know trading blows for after blow and Look at this position of Bushwreck and Keeper of the Forest. I yeah, believe exactly. they're trying to set up a kill here at the middle lane. I believe they're making out in the trees there, but... <laughs> okay, bro. Yeah, here we go. Yep, he's gonna try and catch a Rhapsody. You don't need a root for a Rhapsody, but that's great. Here comes also the Pestilence and the pot's gonna come down here. It's probably gonna get cancelled. It's very good um, decision making there. Well, you don't want to pot him when there's a Keeper there as well as three other Legion members. That's a tier 1 and the middle is gonna get challenged by Team MR. As to why is not gonna come in to just defend this pot. Here comes the second pot. This time Tempest is in the vicinity, so they are definitely going to be able to run away. But there goes the root, the root goes down, and the stun as well. The root, the cracker is going to be used to avoid this double section. The members of the Legion team are just stuck in between there. And a very nice uh, pebble shot there, just a little bit of a backward check. Oh, Pesty is going to be overextending here. He's going to pop the regeneration root. It's going to help him regenerate a little bit, but he gets cancelled. Binding 4 very nicely as well. Cracker is going to try to run away. Here comes also CDC level 7, doing a lot of damage there. But a nice before stun, just stunning two members of the Elbon team. Very nicely done. It's not going to save him though. He's probably going to die. Nice sacrifice there at the very end of the day. And help on team is just not going to trade anyone in that perspective except for the one that they lost a little bit earlier and that would be the um, Rhapsody. But now Pestilence is going to be able to push the mid lane providing a bit of a counter push initiation here. But do know that team help on no longer have got much of any uh, well, cooldown there as in most of the ult is going to be on cooldown so they will not do much of anything and very nice killing there on OSMTD1 by ESC. The pot's going to come in, this is going to be very risky. Yep, Keeper again going to come in to deny by Bushrek, very nicely done there. Tempest probably going to fall to Bushrek. Tempest is in a lot of trouble. Tempest is gonna Ooh. be safe at the very end. That's a very nice news there. And look at Kraken, man, down all the way to just about 20 health again. That's very close clutch play there. MR, it's completely regrettable they couldn't get those two kills there. Yeah, I think Pebbles should have just, you know, not gone for the flash play and just used a toss right straight up onto the Kraken to pick up the kill. Uh, yeah, I guess in a way it also did kind of save his life because he was afraid of the Carve the Disciple from killing him. He will get the tower by the way. So that is a good sign at least for them. But other than that, they actually traded fairly poorly in the in that previous engagement. Yeah. Very, very much in favor of SY right now. They did. It's uh, it's very good, but at least they denied their own tower. They got the tower on the opposite side, which is why you don't see much of any gold lead. But as to why it's really on... Uh, I mean, they are really kind of on form in terms of team fight. Like I said, they got a lot of team fight, but the ganking potential is just not there. So maybe what Team Legion could do is just get Nymphora up to level 6. Start the Pebbles, Nymphora combo. Pebbles needs to snowball a little bit better in this game. Previously, Cheat 1X was at about, I think, about 7 minutes plus. He already had a ball key. But now this is about 12 minutes, still nothing yet in his inventory. That remotely looks like a key. So I want to see him pick up a little bit more farm in that sense. Yeah, I mean... He doesn't have it, but he w he is close to getting it. I mean, he is at around 15k gold. Just needs a little bit more uh, before he picks it up. But Pestons actually is a little bit quicker in that regard. He's already at 16k, so once he gets his portal key, definitely look towards him ganking. Has no points into Gore, by the way. Uh, I guess that's kind of okay. 
I mean, it's kind of nice to just have one point in the guard because you can always make or break a situation uh, sometimes. But yeah, Bushwhack's gonna go back and continue farming again at the bottom lane. Kraken's actually gonna run into Keeper of the Forest, so. Just going back to this, you same old, same old usual routine of gonna continue on farming lane. Yep, same old routine indeed. Level 9 Kraken gonna be back here at the bottom lane against a level 9 Bushwhack. Bushwhack gets a bit of harassment onto him, but his should be fine. Here comes back up Bushwhack. That's gonna come from. Uh, NC slide. It should be the keeper, but keeper looks a bit disinterested. He's just gonna farm the NC, so that's okay. Yep, Tempest is close to finishing his astrolabe, so that's another good, another good sign of life there for S2Y. And yeah, I mean, the double suction played quite a part in that previous, very, very, very previous. Double uh, suction. Yeah, the top, I mean, it, it, it practically like Kraken was pulling them there. into one end. Yeah, Keep and then wrong. like suddenly. They were they were getting pulled one direction, then suddenly pulled to another direction because you know, Tempest was there. A uh, quick cancel though after that. Well, we didn't really say quick cancel. More like a last second cancel. Uh, that last few, last one second, I guess, on the Tempest element of the void. But yeah, it's such a good combination here. And if uh, if Pestance, which I do believe is probably going to be picking up this portal key soon, it's going to be quite the standoff since uh, Pebbles already has his. I'm not sure why he's not buying it yet. Yeah, of course. So far, about 30 minutes into this game, 3 is to 4, 400 gold lead for Hellborn, it's not much of a lead so far. Kraken is um, kind of suffering in this bottom lane here. Let's just take a look at the CS so far from both sides. We have Kraken at about pretty okay CS, 39 is to 5, and um, Flick Rider about uh, 31 is to 25. So in terms of comparing Suicide versus Suicide, both the Suicide players are doing pretty fine. And in terms of carry versus carry, you have um, the bush at about 72, whereas for Corrupted Disciple, it's just doing it about 60. So, so far in terms of farming, I would say that Legion team has got a slight lead. And GPM, it does show that, that same story as well, about 390 here for bush rack, about 350 onto the Pebbles. And we have also Pestilence, Corrupted Disciple, and Tempest about 300 plus. That's kind of good. And like I said, you see, Keeper, he doesn't farm as fast as Tempest. So his GPM is only about 270 at max, and uh, Tempest is already about 310. You can get a little bit better, of course, above 300 is already a good home of success for Tempest. Oh, and surprisingly, uh, we're gonna see a Whispering Helm Bushwhack, so thank god for that. Uh, so this time around, he's actually gonna go for that. I, again, still disagree with going uh, Ghost Marches on top of Energizer. I just feel like it's not as useful. Steam Boots always offers a lot more. Yes, I know you got super high mobility, but you have things like uh, Sidestep and Crippling Dart to slow enemies, so... Would definitely prefer to see the Steam Boots here. Uh, he's going to go for the Whispering Helm route, so hopefully he's going to be able to work with some quick farm stacks here in the near future. If Jung, if Keeper is yeah, but well here comes the Stalagmite. It's very nice. Pebbles ready with the fall key. That's great stuff there. Past is going to take the fall. Meat lane, 15 minutes in, 1.1k goal lead. Now in favor of MR. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Look at that. Mr. Sun's portal key is on the ground. He was hoping to make a big play, and you know. Uh, a, a, a second time for him to make a big play, but unfortunately he got turned upon on by the Pebbles' own portal key, so that's kind of hilarious to see. And uh, I think Kraken is working towards finishing out Hamilton the Black Legion. They're gonna get this tier 1 at the bottom lane, uh, and I don't think they're gonna be able to destroy this tier 2 anytime soon. Portal key, by the way, already completed on Keeper of the Forest, so forsaking everything else and just wait for the portal key to instantly cancel out the Tempest, I guess it's an okay option here. Yeah. I mean, his main job here is just to just provide the crowd control and to lock down the Tempest to cancel the ultimate there. It's something that he definitely needs to look towards accomplishing because he's the only absolute counter against Tempest in this lineup here. Um, of course, you can also say that a Plague Rider with mini stun and the ultimate can also provide that, but I think it's only the first one that provides a mini stun, right? Or yeah, 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 only the first one. So that's and plus the fact that Plague Rider's ultimate is kind of a little bit short range, if I'm not wrong. So yeah, really yeah, but it. the bounces are pretty damn crazy. If if you can, yeah, but the bounces do not have mini stun, right? Yeah, they don't. Yeah, so he cannot really cancel that as well. <laughs> well, oh, wait. I... Astrolabe is completed by Tempest, and that's well, a good sign. Mm -hmm, yeah. I don't know about the mini stun on Plague there, but but it. No, it, it only works on the first uh, um, initial. The professional Plague Rider next to me is saying no. But, oh well. Oh really? Oh well, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but.
Of course, it's a 16 minutes game already, and um, Legion team having a bit of a good lead. Hellborn is going to pull back here. They have a Bushak to rely on, and oh, sorry, they have a Corrupted Disciple to rely on. And Corrupted Disciple doesn't much of anything. Of course, those Energizers is going to help him and the team a little bit more, but he needs to get a little bit more damage as well. It's all maybe even protective, but either which is going to help him a lot. Protective items like the uh, Helm of the Black Legion is going to be one. They could probably provide a bit of a you know, survivability so they can leech enough damage with Corrupted Conduit. So maybe building raw damage is also pretty good and awesome stuff. That's it. Bottom lane 5 man push. It's going to be a 5v5 action here. And the lane down self is going to have a bit of a contest here as well. Um, still so far nothing big happening. They are just having a good old stare down as usual. The calm before the storm. But yeah. Just trying to size up their opponents in that kind of regard. I don't know how this is actually going to work out in terms of uh, wrestling but I hope uh, it actually kind of work out here but Mm -hmm. I still think I give the favor to Hellborn because uh, if they play it really good and if Rhapsody is not in a bad position, they can win the team fight. Mm -hmm. They can. That's pretty good. It's a, it's all gonna be up to Rhapsody as well as um, all the other CC heroes there. Oh. But there goes Stalingrad. It's gonna oh. miss Pestlet. What a miss play! Shit, I'm actually a lot of trouble there. It's oh, probably gonna be dead. Yep, that's gonna be a four v five. Legion's gonna have to bail out right now. Flicker, that's a lot of trouble. Flicker, they're actually gonna have to try and go through. The Woods here, he's gonna try and juke his way out of here, but he gets completely <laughs> locked down. And Corrupt the Conduit gonna be the death there, he's probably gonna die. Pesty gonna do a bit of a roundup. Back to Gastry with the double tap and Legion team because of the Pebbles misplay there. He, they are actually gonna lose the tier one down south. Yeah, can I, I'm just gonna say that, that was kind of hilarious. The, everyone ran past the uh, Flag Rider because they were all energized. It was kind of funny, I think they were hoping that, oh, let's trap him in there. Oh, wait, we've got Energizer on us, and they all like, ran in different directions. and. Kind of hilarious to see, but yeah, that was a huge uh, team fight for them. Well, I guess not really a team fight, just a, a big blunder there by Shadow One X when he jumped in and even missed the stalagmites. So yeah, uh, Keeper of the Force actually is in the background though, and he's in Viz right now. But I sense a Nim4 port coming. Yep. It does bring Bushwhack down here, who decides to pick up his Homecoming Stone again. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing they can do. It's not like they're he actually didn't port the pebbles, he just ported the bushwhack for some other It's okay. Now there's a 5 man aggression again. They're gonna try and redo it, correct the mistake it was made. And all 5 them energized is gonna go and jump in there. Kraken is a bit of trouble. Kraken is now gonna try and run away, but um, they're gonna try and vibe for this Predasaurus here. And Dragons and Dragon Masters. Um, but they're not gonna jump in. Okay, now it seems like, uh, well, Mr. Stan's gonna jump back in. I mean, for that Kraken is gonna release the ultimate there very nicely. Pebbles now gets locked down very nicely as well. There it goes. The Corrupted Disciple just nicely sizing up, setting up a little bit of a perimeter there. And we got a Bushwhack just running away, nicely armored up by the, uh, well, Plague Rider, but he should still be in a bit of a trouble there. There goes the Swamp, that's gonna provide vision for the team already. The team should still be on band, should be banned on getting their skill. Bushwhack's out of mana completely. He should, um, well, he doesn't have the option to change his team there. He's probably dead. There we go, yep. Uh, yeah, PK in one second, just the best thing. Uh, uh, instantly win that. Yep, really good initiation there actually by Mr. Suns to kind of catch them off guard. And so unfortunate that the Plague Carrier, uh, the Plague U ultimate there, it actually went to. If I'm not mistaken, it was the Tempest, and Tempest just bounced it off the minions there and didn't really give a damn after that. So unfortunate for him. That was a uh, ulti that didn't really quite hit the mark. and. Right now, I think uh, S2I is probably feeling pretty happy that they took that team fight. They're gonna go ahead and try to milk on whatever resources they can in the Legion jungle, uh, just to kind of deny the, that that more bit of farm from them. Yep, and uh, Keeper is in complete covered up smooth right now. Spots out Tempest, gonna stalk him a bit on Facebook, and from behind Rhapsody is gonna just say hi. That's a better one to stalk if you ask me. Don't stalk that blubber there, but yeah. That's it. Okay, that's gonna be a reverse port coming in from Nifora and Pebbles again. That's gonna pick up a kill. Bomb Rusher Pulse is gonna size it up very nicely. So it did pay off at the very end, but now Rhapsody is gonna be challenged here by Busha. Busha probably is gonna be able to get his kill. Yep, he should be able to get it. No, oh, wow. he's not. All the way down to about just 30 health there. <laughs> yeah, his jungle toxin still not strong enough. To maybe level 16. Yeah, maybe level 16. Rapsy, I bet Rapsy ED was just clenching himself, like, oh shit, I oh, survived, okay, thank god. Uh, but yeah, um, Corrupted Disciple, wow, okay, so Corrupted Disciple, I actually thought that was going to be translated to a shrunken hit. It's actually a staff of the master. Uh, that will provide a lot of the, uh, DPS, especially seeing as to how they have both suctions from 
element of void as well as the Kraken ultimate. So he's gonna have a lot of uh, presence there in team fights if he wasn't already. And uh, yeah, probably next item should be that shrunken head and then into things like Jim and his Bane uh, and all that kind of jazz, you know, the usual, usual. Kraken here, I believe, is probably working towards picking up a uh, portal key soon. He could actually also just opt to not go the portal key and quickly get a soul's bulwark because they're facing against the. I mean, not facing, I mean, because they can, you know, utilize a bit more out of the pestilence. Uh, swarm ability there, but he might just get the portal key for even much more initiation. Yeah. So we have Team Legion now, all five of them, just farming again. Hellborn is also going to take this opportunity to farm as much as possible, but I don't see how this is actually going to really work out in favor of Team Legion if this goes on. They are just kind of behind in terms of team fight. They have a lot of good teamwork synergy, like I've been saying in the entire game from Team Hellborn. And if you look again at Bushak's item, he doesn't really have much inventory yet. I want to see what he could really provide to this field here. Yeah, they're, I believe they're going to try to push this, uh, I mean address this uh, tier 2 tower mid. And Legion team, they can't kind of fight this. Uh, they all, they have the Nymphora Pebbles port combination if they want to backstab them from behind. That that can definitely happen here. Uh, but they just need to like slowly chip this away, back off, chip away, back in again, chip away, back off, and then you know, just keep rinse and repeating. And it's going to be pretty difficult for Legion to kind of uh, defend that. They're actually not gonna defend a tier 2 and that's a fine decision. I'm just gonna go ahead and defend the base tower here because uh, pushback can keep of course trying to set the pressure at the bottom. Yep it is and they are actually gonna back up after taking down the tier 2 very nicely done. Legion team is just gonna be waiting here. We got Plague Rider, we got Nephora, we got Pebbles, all of which are just camping here. Um, Keeper as well as Bushrack does have a homecoming stone so sh they should be able to pop back home if there is a need for that. But yeah, about this game still is just providing a lot of farming opportunity for both sides, and I guess that they're not ready to take the fight yet. Yeah, um, they're just gonna be contented with farming a little bit more. Uh, Pestas is getting close to his shrunken head, I do believe. He just needs a pattern now. Uh, Rap City still no other items because he's just busy wording. Tempest actually going for more of the tanky shot. I really like that. I believe he's probably gonna finish up a shrunken head himself. Uh. Corrupt the Disciple, like I said earlier, things like the Shrunken Head. Yep, the Infora Pot incoming. Uh oh. He's gonna Kill. provide a gang on Pasty. Pasty is definitely gonna die there, and Color X picks the KS up very nicely. Oh, Portal Key is just finished by Kraken, by the way. Just picked it up there. Uh, who was the port, anyways? I think it was. Yeah, I think it was Tempest. Yeah, Tempest doesn't have a port anymore. So, hoping that he could have saved his teammate. Not gonna be enough. I mean, we always have to remember the Infora Port. Combination with the pebbles is just too damn scary. So Helper team, hopefully they can kind of you know play around that kind of issue there. Oh Kraken jumps in very nicely, just slams Bushak into the tree there, and also releases the ultimate very nicely as well. Here comes Pebbles just doing a little bit of a pull up at the back there. That's gonna save a lot. Rhapsody pops out for no apparent reason, and Kim is just gonna pull back. Meanwhile, it seems that Pebbles gets zero in by grab the disciple here. He is definitely looking to go down very soon because there's no way to pot out this one. And on the other side, Nymphora does decide to pot out very nicely. Kraken will not be able to pick up the kill there. Yep, uh, really well played there by S2Y. So At least they get some favor back again in their own uh, hands. And they're gonna actually gonna go ahead and clear their own stacked ancients there. They can look towards pushing if they want to. Or Kong. Yeah, Kong is fine. Since they know that the members from the Legion team are down. They, sh they definitely can take this uh, with ease. Yeah, they can. And uh, Kong is gonna get challenged here by Hellborn. Legion is... Not gonna be within sight yet. And uh, speaking of vision and sight, there's only one water record by MRR. And okay, maybe the new water sight's gonna be able to spot on this initiation here. And they could probably want to jump in. But looking at the items there, only keeper can go in. And keeper, you don't want to see him engage. But if you don't have pebbles. That's the problem. But oh. speaking of, about keeper, he gets challenged here. He's forced to use the root. Gets stunned. Uh, gets stunned a little bit by Statico from Rhapsody. Not able to get away just in time. Probably is also gonna take the fall. That's such a waste. But here comes also the backup from Pebbles. Pebbles goes in. Stalagmites lands on two heroes. Very nicely done by Pebbles. He's not gonna pick up most of those heroes there because of the kill from Rhapsody. And also you got Crafty Disciple just picking up the four. The four goes down very easily. And we got Bushwhack Duiku or Duiku is just in a, on a run at date man walking bush indeed. Um, we got also the Pebbles just coming to serve his teammates. So that's gonna be the clash. But look at that Plague Ultimate. Not gonna bounce off anyone. And Corrupted the Disciple is just so low. That say Duiku is dead after all because of ESC's Kraken just going in at a clutch moment there. And speaking about which, s to y is doing so well in this game. And MR is just very far behind. 
Yeah, completely demolishing. That was crazy. That was a crazy turn of events. Uh, action after action after action, and uh, really clutch there. That corrupted disciple did die. Oh, he finished up this uh, shrunken head. By the way, instantly bought it. There's a haste in there. It's probably gonna be bottled by pestilence. And Kraken's just gonna tank this out. They're gonna take Kong easily. And after they take this Kong, they can farm for a bit. Hope for some. Uh, hope for pestilence to finish up the shrunken head, and then look towards pushing. Uh, by the way, uh, Tempest actually has the. Shaman Citrus is going to quickly get the uh, very idle, very idle, very very good against the first damage coming up from Plague Rider, so that's a good option. And, and yeah. Rem City needs to realize that she's going to be for the last few years, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's standing on the outskirts of that pit there. Exactly. That's okay, we have a tanky goal lead for as to why all of a sudden they are still an elite in this game here. Initially, you see that Team Legion had a bit of a goal lead because they had the engagement sense, but it doesn't seem to pay off a rub off in the late stage of this game because in terms of AoE they are definitely far behind and you see again in that, in that fight even um, that's gotta be... That, I don't think that's even a full fight you don't have the element of void being used there so and already Hellbond's already on top so that's just really crazy it really is uh, Tempest, after Tempest just finishes his uh, barrier idol I believe he's just gonna just maybe even purchase the Trunken Head next uh, Tablet of Command actually is a pretty good option uh, for him as well if he wants to. Uh, that will definitely kind of help his teammates a bit. Um, looking at everything else, Pestilence is 200 gold away from his Shrunk Edit. Again, I think they're just going to wait for that before they push since Carpet the Zap already has his own uh, Shrunken Head as well. Here, there we go, just purchased and Kraken is probably going to pick up on that Souls of War next. For sure. And we also got Token up on Corrupted Disciple, like you mentioned, and Legion so Team is just... I don't know, they are kinda they're kinda in this game, but I don't see them having a very strong lead. And that's because Bushrak isn't really matured yet. Bushrak is still waiting for his shrunk death. He needs that for sure, if he wants to even count on surviving. But even if he has it, the, the stuff of the Master and Corrupted Disciple probably is gonna do a lot of damage. And that's crazy. So we have a level 17 CD on Team S2Y and Legion side. Uh, I mean, Bushrak is just not paying off here in this game. Yeah, because he, he, the thing is, he's just controlled so hard. He is close to finishing his shrunken head. Well, I say close, but in actual fact, he's about like 1k, 9k away from finishing that up. I mean, 900 away from, well, 9k? Well, uh, 900 away from finishing that up. Uh, Rhapsody, by the way, has a bound. I already uh, hasted Pestilence, gets his, uh, up, up, gets his shrunken head. They can push this tier 2 at the top and then force a base uh, attack there. But I think oh wait, I'm hearing them for ports for some reason. Okay, then mm, never mind. Nope, don't see that. Yeah. Okay, so Bushback actually did complete his shrunken head. So that's some sign of the life at least for the Legion side. Yeah, for sure, and uh, some signs indeed. A Legion team can still come back into this game, like I said, but they need to make sure that they pick off team members of Hellbound first before they decide on a push. And because they don't have the early game traction, it's kind of hard. Um, to provide that kind of a mid-game victory here for MR. If you have the early game traction, it means that you go in, you gank, you, you kill one or two members, you snowball after that, and make sure that Pebbles is strong. Pebbles is at about level 14, 15 right now, and you try and push mid lane or, or bottom lane after you pick off members of the opposing team. Very nice synergy there. But you don't have that, and that's going to be a problem. Yep, it really is going to be a problem. I think that um, uh, this this... This next team fight will make or break the game for for S2I. Yep, definitely S2I is um, gonna be waiting for a good engagement opportunity here. I have on tower. Who's gonna make the push down first? Is it gonna be Pebbles or is it? Oh, okay, Pasty is gonna jump in, but that's just a bit of a cheesy on there. And Pasty is in a lot of trouble, but there goes Kraken using the ultimate there. Tempest not gonna come in yet. Tempest just hiding behind. Rhapsody is gonna get challenged by Bushra. Bushra is gonna use Crippling Dot. Doing a bit of a damage there, and also you have a uh, corrupted disciple just going in, manning up against the Nymphora. That's gonna be a one for one exchange, but of course, losing pestilence means a lot. That's your initiation hero you don't wanna lose, but unfortunately, it seems like he just made a big misplay there, jumping into no man's zone. So yeah. Yeah, that was really sloppy. Uh, he, he shouldn't even be jumping in when he doesn't even have the token. And when he jumped in, he missed, and Kraken missed his ulti as well, so. That huge chain of events just caused them to miss out on a lot of the aggression that they could have, you know, continued riding on. Because if they had destroyed that defense tower, uh, we could have very much seen 
a Couldn't see it coming in. Yeah, because they don't have any buybacks coming up. Speaking about that, Pebble's not gonna get caught out here. Pebbles don't wanna get caught out here, but that's it. Busha is also gonna deal some damage on ESC. ESC is gonna try to run away there. And uh, Crafted Sapple is gonna be enough to pick up that. And we have also Keeper coming from behind. Kraken is probably dead here. Rhapsody comes in a little bit too slow with the element. That, that's very regretful. Contagia is gonna be used there, but CD is gonna be able to man up. Bushwhack is hiding behind the trees there. That's a blob buff. Back to the Gashi. That's gonna be a hat trick blob buff for him. That's looking really good. I'm back to the Gashi. He's gonna be able to get the tier 1. For sure, there's no Bushwhack right now. Bushwhack probably does not have enough to buy back. Tier 1 goes down. Melee Barracks gets wrecked already. Very nice play there by, uh, by Crafted Disciple. It was a bit of a one man effort. Yep, and uh, I yeah, it's definitely gonna be in favor right now for like they can destroy this racks and rotate mid, and there's still nothing that Legion team can do. To be very honest, like uh, they they're gonna be coming out in like a couple of more uh, seconds, but again, they can still address this uh, issue here in the, in the mid lane. For sure, because they have all five men there. The only thing that's lacking is probably Kraken. Um, <laughs> surprising I called him the thing. But yeah, oh, you have the Tempest Element of Void make up for that, so that's not quite a problem. And of course, they're still gonna be able to deal a lot of damage on these creeps and looking to just up for a little bit of damage on the defense. So, do no token is still alive on Crafted Disciple. He does have enough for the next 1 minute and 30 seconds thereabouts. So, if Kraken comes back alive here, he should still be able to push down the mini break. Legion Team's probably gonna force a jump here. And the force jump's probably not gonna help Legion Team a lot. Uh, we have Kraken falling to the top lane for some weird reason. And yep, there goes the jump already. The Pestilence jumps in a little bit sloppy on his end and also. And that's not gonna be enough to pick up anything at all. CD just goes in, but Element of Voice is gonna be able to lock down Pebbles. Pebbles is not gonna do much of anything. The cancellation there by Flake Audi is only the first one. It's a mini slam, by the way. And that nicely cancels out the Tempest Ultimate. We also have the Keeper of the Forces put for a big root there. And a very nice crack, and he comes in just in the right side to pick up Bushwhack. Very nicely done. And Pebbles comes in a little bit suicide there. He's also gonna take a fall. And Hellbone team is on the roll. They're not gonna stop this aggression. Melee Brax is gonna get Rex here. And MR looking to lose this. Third game here. Wow. Yep, they're calling GG's already. Is it really gonna go through? Yeah, I think it is. There, there's nothing you can do against CD right now. Yep, but I mean, it just com got completely out of hand, and this is the problem of trying to crash your You practically become useless uh, in team fights because either you use the ultimate, you whiff it, that you're, then you're pretty much screwed. You don't whiff it, you use it, but then after that, what do you do? Uh, he didn't have anything else to kind of support the rest of the team. Uh, can't really blame him also because I guess they were just going into the game thinking that yeah, you have to quickly rush the restoration stone while you know Plague Rider does the bulk of the utility work there with the you know Tablet of Command, uh, Astrolabe, and unfortunately it was just not enough. Yeah, that's really really bad play there coming up from Team L MRR, of course. Um, of course, you can also say that Pestilence kind of threw his position away multiple times, but the lockdown from Pebbles did try and salvage the situation. I guess the main problem really is Corrupted Disciple. He just snowballed out of control too much there. And that generally cost him a lot of that game. So yeah, that's it. Babel and Locke here are going to be back with the fourth game in just about 5 to 15 minutes. So sit tight, stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoyed this cast. And I hope you guys enjoyed this day, really. Um, see you guys again in a while.